Hello, my friends. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I am Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today, I am once again in Luminar Neo and once again playing with the HDR merge feature. I'm loving this thing. It's so much fun. If you don't have it yet, there is a link down below where you can acquire this extension in Luminar Neo. What we're talking about today is taking a landscape and creating not just an HDR photo, but a natural HDR photo. Because let's be honest, HDR has not always had a good name. It stands for high dynamic range, which means being able in a single photo to have a large range between the really bright parts and the really dark parts and be able to balance that light out. But unfortunately, because there have been so many examples, including done by yours truly, but so many examples of just really over the top HDR that looks terrible that sometimes I think of HDR as standing for highly disastrous result. We don't want a highly disastrous result. We want a high dynamic range, beautiful, natural landscape. That's what we're doing today and going through a few tips to help you get there. I've got this collection of photos that were bracketed, of course, and I'm gonna drop them into the merge window and go ahead and build my merged HDR image. Okay, and here it is blended and frankly looking beautiful. But there's some things about it that I want to correct. So what I want to do is edit this photo. Here's the first tip. You have an HDR. As you know, it gets dropped into the HDR merge folder down there. And you can come in and start to edit the photo right here. But there's another thing that you can do, which is blend this HDR with one of the original exposures, which helps you balance things out and get a little bit less intensity. Because let's be honest, some of this is a little bit intense. Now, I like HDR and I kind of like intense photos, but I'm talking about natural and subtle stuff here. And the things that I think about when I'm editing a photo are the same things I think about when editing an HDR. Light, detail, and color are wanting to control those because HDR often creates a little bit of an over-the-top image. I think in HDR Merge here in Neo and in Aurora HDR before that, that the results are very natural anyway, but there's always the opportunity to kind of push those pixels a little far. So this option here gives you a way to help overcome that. So I'm gonna go back to the original RAW. These are the three exposures that I shot in this bracket set. And what I wanna do is just add this blended HDR as a layer. I'm gonna click on plus. I've already gone and gotten that image and it drops in on top. Now it drops in at a 50 opacity. If I drop it in at 100, all you're seeing is the top layer, which is the HDR. But this is the first tip, and that is you can reduce that opacity in order to more casually, basically, blend these two photos together. So I actually think at 70, it looks quite nice. Except here's another tip, and that is you don't have to just use the opacity slider. You can experiment with blend modes, but also, perhaps more importantly, there is masking. So what I want to do is go in and remove some of the intensity from the sky because I kind of like the way the clouds were, more so in the original photo. Clouds, especially when they have some shadow in them, like in this photo, they can get a little contrasty, a little stormy, and they're frankly what I, me and my friends used to call HDR clouds. You can really amp them up and get them crunchy and over the top. I don't want to do this. We're talking about natural HDR. So what I want to do is go in and erase with the brush. And I'm going to take a strength of maybe 40. And all I'm going to do is right bracket key to increase the size of that. And when you start painting, you will see, hey, there's a mask overlay because that's what this is. This image is sitting on top of the other image and you can mask it accordingly. So I'm going to come in and actually just remove some of that HDR from the sky. So that's a second way you can blend it. So something like that looks good. And so what I've done is I've erased a chunk, if you will, a high percentage of the HDR sky, which is revealing the base sky underneath. Now it's a little bit of a blend because I did not erase it at 100, I erased it at 40. And whereas I'm getting HDR in all the other areas. So that's something to think about. And it's a way to help you control the overall look of the photo. Now, the next thing I want to do is I like the way this photo looks, but if I turn this off and you go look at my original base layer, there it is, raw file, you can see develop raw. I actually kind of want to brighten this one a little bit. It gives me a little bit more umph in that blended photo. So what I want to do is go into develop raw and I'm just going to pull the highlights down and I'm just going to pull the shadows up. So I've taken my underlying base layer from that to that to create a little bit brighter base layer. Now I'm gonna go back and turn on this layer, show layer, and overall I've got a little bit brighter HDR blend 
because it's partly blending this HDR on top with what is underneath it. And now that I'm here, I just wanna pop in to develop and do some basic edits that I would already want to do. Slight bump in smart contrast and a little bit of reduction in highlights. I want to give a little bit warmer look overall and a little bit of a magenta tint. This was a beautiful, beautiful sunset that I will remember for a long time because I get so many nice photos. This is Moraine Lake in Banff National Park in Canada. I am dying to go back, trust me. It is beautiful, it looks just like that. It, it's insanely gorgeous. So anyway, it was a wonderful trip and I got a lot of great photos that I'm really happy with. And of course, I was firing brackets. This was in 2017, I was firing brackets left and right. But so far we've made a nice little impact. There's your base underlying layer, a raw file, unedited, and there it is blended with this HDR. And because it's a sunset, one of the things I wanna do is give it a little bit of a bump in golden hour. It does a fabulous job of bringing up some of that warmth that exists in the clouds. And what I'm also gonna do is go into color harmony and give it a little bit of a warmth bump here and also in split color warmth. Color Harmony is fantastic. If you would like to see more videos about Color Harmony, leave me a comment down below and say, hey, Color Harmony or something. I'll, uh, I'll know what you're talking about. So now that I've done that, there are some things about the color that I think I need to address. And this is another thing to be aware of. I mentioned earlier, light, detail, and color are the key things to pay attention to in any photo edit but in HDRs as well. And when you're going for natural HDR, I'm looking at color and I've bumped up some of the warmer tones here, which I wanna do. It's a sunset, I wanna accentuate that. But the natural HDR process also tends to bring about a lot of color and a lot of saturation. And so color control, I think is vitally important because you can end up with what I like to call clown vomit, right? Where you get all these highly saturated colors and I don't really consider this that, but it's kind of getting in that ballpark and I wanna get away from that ballpark. So the, the color that's, I think, uh, kind of a little bit out of control here is really the green. And so I'm gonna go into the green and I'm gonna pull down the saturation like mid 40s, something about like that. And then I'm also going to go into the luminance of the green and pull that down as well. Now that does two things for me. Number one, that over the top green, let me show you before. Those greens, that there's a lot of yellow in the green. And so keep in mind, you may need to also reduce the yellow. I don't really need to this time, but the green can be impacted by the yellow. So keep that in mind. But that green is out of control. And because I framed it with these trees, kind of like they're standing guard at the end of the lake, they're really popping off that blue water behind them. I want the blue more than I want the green. And so I want to reduce the intensity, which I've just done. So I've created less intense color, number one. But number two, I've darkened it, which means it's also less going to catch your eye. I think it also creates a little bit better contrast between that foreground element and the background. Now I mentioned detail. And one of the things I like to do is add structure to scenes like this. So I go to about 45, but here's a thing to be aware of and something to think about. Another tip, and that is do not add this across the entire photo. That's what masking is for. I'm gonna use a brush mask. And what I wanna do is just paint this positive structure into the mountains and a little bit of the foreground. Okay, something about like that looks good. Notice I did not cover the trees, for example. Remember, I reduced the intensity of the saturation and the light level or the luminance of the trees, which is the green. So I add detail to that because I've already kind of darkened it and I don't really want people being distracted by that. I also didn't do the mountains on the left-hand side because I think the mountains in the distance are the ones that are much more important in the photo. So that's why I think it's important to be selective, which is why you have all these great masking tools, brush mask, mask AI, whatever it might be but you have all these great masking tools you can take advantage of to selectively control and be specific about where your edits are going in your photo. I think that helps overall having a less intense image. Now I'm gonna to go to Accent AI, which I talked about using late in my edits in that video. And in this case, I'm gonna go pretty high. I'm actually going to a 60, which I don't really always recommend. It does a lot of things to an image. It pops color, contrast, it cranks up a lot of things and overall, way too much in too much of the photo. But again, that's where brush comes in. I'm gonna go ahead and paint this in at full strength, but only into the mountain areas. Okay, so there's my mask. I just painted it in specifically to the, basically the tops of those mountains. And I did not use mask AI because that was also grabbing the bottom areas, like down here where I did not want to add that. It also grabbed that mountain area over here to the left which I don't really care about. Again, I'm focused kind of on the distant peaks being the key focal point of the photo. And so I gave them a little bit of oomph, as you can see, there it is before, and there it is after using XNAI with a mask, just to be specific about where it goes. 
Now the next tool is Dodge and Burn, and this is a great example of being very specific and targeted with your edits. I'm gonna go in at a low strength, like maybe about a 15, and in Lighten, I'm gonna come over here and just give a little bit of brightness to some of this distant mountain. Again, that's really the focal point of the photo, and I'm trying to be targeted and specific about how my edit is gonna end up. So something about like that, there it is before, and there it is now, and while I'm on that tool, I'm gonna to go ahead and go with a low strength of about a 10 on Darken, and I'm gonna do that a little bit over here on this left-hand side. Remember, I did not hit this with Accent AI, nor did I hit it with Structure AI, simply because it's not really a big deal to me. It kind of helps frame the photo, but I don't really want the eye to spend a lot of time lingering there, if possible. And I'm also slightly darkening that foreground area. So there it is before, dodge and burn. And there it is after, slightly brighter on those peaks, slightly darker in the foreground and the left-hand side. So again, controlling where color goes and specific color channels, controlling where detail goes, and also controlling light levels with dodge and burn in different parts of the photo. Basically, just going slow and making sure that you're adjusting the photo to your taste without going over the top. Now, one thing I like to do after kind of getting to the end of my edit, and that's kind of where I am. I feel like I'm pretty close, but I often like to go back into develop and play around with a few of the sliders just in case there's a little bit extra I want to do. And in this case, I settled on about a two in warmth and a 10 on tint. Now, this is just doing a slight color temperature adjustment, but there it is before and there is now. In other words, what I'm doing is basically getting a little bit away from the blue. The blue is very intense, the sky is blue, the mountains are kind of blue, and obviously the lake is an incredible color of blue. I wanted to pull that back a little bit, and using temperature and tint, again, in develop has really helped me do that. Now the last thing that I recommend doing when trying to create a natural HDR landscape is go back up here to your layer properties and consider adjusting the opacity again. I like it like this, but this might be a little bit much for you. You can just pull that opacity down. Maybe you like it at 60 instead of 70. I think that looks incredibly natural. Maybe you even like it at 50. Now keep in mind, as you reduce the opacity of this layer, that might mean you need to go back in and bump up certain specific aspects of the edits that you made to this photo that's sitting on top because as you're reducing the opacity, the things you did here are decreasing in intensity. Because that opacity slider is across this entire photo, and this is the HDR frame that's sitting on top of the other one. So it, if you reduce the opacity at the end of your edit, you might see something and say, well, I kinda need to go make that brighter, or that darker, or that more detailed, or that more colorful, because you're basically pulling down the opacity of everything that you've done. Now, I'm gonna leave it at 70. I kinda like it, but I also like a little bit more dramatic photos. Anyway, I wanted to walk through that workflow and give you some ideas about how you can adjust HDRs to get very specific and targeted with your edits, but also, more importantly, how to make it look natural without creating a highly disastrous result. And that is my full edit, my friends. Let me show you the before and the after. Powerful, quick, easy, by being specific and targeted and doing some certain things like blending the HDR back with the original layer, adjusting opacity, brushing it in. It's all about control. That's how you make a very natural landscape photo. Now, if you like this video, I think you'll also wanna check out that video. Thanks for watching, my friends. I appreciate it. I'll be back soon with more. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you soon, my friends. You guys take care, and until then, adios.